We're in Luke chapter 18, and here at the Father's house, what we do is we preach through the Gospels from uh, chapter 1 to the end, and we go through the four Gospels, and then on Sunday morning, we just start right over again. And uh, we, we preach on Sunday morning the Gospels of Jesus Christ, at least, at least I do. When other guest speakers are here, they preach whatever God gives them to preach. But this is what he's instructed me to do for as long as I'm alive at the Father's house church. So that's what we will do. So let join with me, chapter 18 of Luke, verse 1 through 8. And what we had last week was uh, the, you know, one, two men walking up a hill, one will be taken, two, you know, man and wife asleep in bed. If you're on the roof and you're, you hear the call, don't go down, one will be taken, one will be left. And so, and we move into verse, and then we move on. What's funny is the last verse that I left out of that one is that uh, about the, where the, where the body is, where the corpse is, there the vultures will be. And I don't, like, uh, I, like, I, <laughs> I'm not trying to miss it. I just, last week I never did comment on it. Anyway, but it, it's, so the very next verse after the vulture story is, uh, now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Saying, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city and she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection from my opponent. For a while he was unwilling, but afterward he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection. Otherwise, by continually coming, she will wear me out. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now will not God bring about justice for his elect who cry to him day and night? And will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes... Will he find faith on the earth? And in, in other translations, it says, will, will he find any faith left on the earth? And it's, it's very indicative of that. Will, will there be any faith left in his children when he returns? And so it's an interesting story. And the headline is, it's about prayer and persistent prayer. And what the Christian church has done, in my opinion, is we have developed all these different prayer models. I remember Larry Lee's one hour prayer and all of these different, you, you can go to the Bible bookstore or you can go online and you'll just get so many different prayer models and prayer um, systems. And they're all kind of, you know, supposed to be the magic wand or the key that turns the lock in the door. And I think what people do is they develop this and they go to, they take this verse, this parable And they say, see, this is what we should do often. And I think what we we end up doing is this this unrighteous judge is not God. So if we develop the, the employ, what this says, you're talking about praying based on a model of an unrighteous judge who is not God. And the most important part of this story is that this is not God they're praying, that the widow's praying to. He's using an example of man's justice, and he says, if you can count on man's justice operating this way, don't you think you can count on God's justice operating a better way? And the system or the model of prayer, the prayer model that most of us get settled into, is almost proven to be non effective, almost proven to not work, and has most people so frustrated, they don't want to pray anymore. Because you keep selling them on the way the unrighteous judge will respond, and they dig deeper, and they go harder, and they try to be more of a bother to the unrighteous judge, getting what they want. It'll work if I just keep pounding. It'll work if I just keep doing what I was doing. But today, what I'd like to say is, Won't God bring justice for you fast if you're asking for what he wants justice to be? If you find out, if you make your prayer life about identifying what God wants justice to be, if you look at the verses in the Bible where it actually tells you if you're a slave to remain a slave, it's like, well, that ain't the justice I would have asked for. If you're in prison, don't try to get out. Make being in prison your ministry. That's what the apostles were telling them, and that's how they exampled it. They're, they're pray, what were they doing? Singing hymns and songs and spiritual songs to the Lord, and an angel came and opened the door. Now we know it's God's will to go out. Wow. 
But on the way out, the jailer's going to kill himself because he's going to be killed by because he let him escape. They said, don't kill yourself yet. Try Jesus. Kill yourself tomorrow. No, next year. No. And he led the whole family to Jesus. And they're all going to live forever, whether they're killed by the magistrate or not. And they're making the important part of this journey to be about relationship with God, your father. Re uh, prayer life should be about a lifestyle and a relationship. It's not a series you buy a card, my little prayer pocket prayer book, and you follow this system. Because that's what he's saying the wicked judge does. But he's trying to get you. So wouldn't your father in heaven be better than the wicked judge? Wouldn't it be a better plan? I was thinking about how much money I would really like to have, right? And, you know, I just think that if I keep beating on the door, I'm going to get that amount. I would really, my purpose is not for me. I want that kind of money. I want to build the kingdom. I want to build things that help more and more people. I want to be able to spend that 450 for someone like Devin a thousand more times before I die, or even 10,000 more times before I die. So I'm going to need a bit of money to do that. I want to build something. I want to build a bigger sanctuary so more, more people fit and can hear the words of Jesus. Are you following me? So I think about it and I say, but what I leave out of the equation is, Lord, would it be good for me to have this? Because I know my Father in heaven is going to answer based on what's good for me. I don't have to say, oh, if it's good for me, could you give me? I can just accept, well, I didn't get it, so I'm going to assume he didn't want me to have it. I'm going to assume this must be his plan. Now, I want with all my heart, I mean, this crowd right here, this crowd, and I can see faces. I've seen your faces, and I know a lot of you. You've had loss in your life that was so abrupt and so hard. You have had that, that hideous and horrible phone call. And others have sat by the bed for years, and the loss came over a period of a long period of time. And I know what that's like. Both. I've had the phone call, and I've sat by the bed, and I've felt the loss. So many people have lost their spouse, their children, their parents untimely. And that call or that, uh, that thing that comes that you prayed so diligently not to have happen to you. It's a very difficult thing to say, I accept God's will in my life. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue. And I'm going to make sure I don't lose my joy and my peace and my patience and my kindness and my goodness, my love and my self-control. I'm going to make sure I don't lose these things. I'm going to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And I stood in front of a fire. I told you just a couple weeks ago, I commanded a fire and it turned. The next fire I commanded, it came right at me. We were running for our lives. <laughs> our tail feathers were on, literally on fire as the house burnt down. It's like I commanded the fire and it turned. And that was really great. And then I can fire, and it didn't turn. I accept God's will for my life. And what should my prayers look like? This is... This really is about continual and effective prayer. James told us the continual and effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. What Jesus is trying to get us to be is effective righteous men and women. And telling us that if we are, if we are righteous men and women, then that our prayers will be effectual. And who, does, who, who knows me commanding a fire wasn't effectual? Me becoming its target. You can't believe the blessings of my life that came out of that fire. I actually will stand in front of you honestly and tell you that's one of the greatest blessings that's ever happened in my life was my house burning down. Now, who wants their house to burn down? Nobody. I was standing in front trying to keep it from happening before it happened. But as soon as it happened, I said, praise the Lord. This is his will for my life. Where we go now? What do we do now? What's up? Are we moving? Are we leaving town? Are we moving to another place? Or are we rebuilding? He said clearly to me, we're rebuilding. So we went and strapped our bags on and started rebuilding. Immediately started cleaning up the mess. Because this is what we do. I've suffered incredible loss. I've had things that I don't understand, like my mother suffering forever with Alzheimer's. Worst thing, worse than anything else I've ever seen. The loss of someone's brain. And I just, what do you do? What is the prayer life? And I think that it's so clear, and I don't want to miss the opportunity to tell you what this is really 
really talking about is the lifestyle of prayer that is repetitive, that, that the trust comes from, that the knowledge of prayer being powerful and effective comes from the relationship with God as your Father. And I will tell you that this room is a couple of hundred people right now, a few more than that. And, and there's probably a couple of hundred different mentalities about prayer. There's probably quite a few different opinions about what your prayer should be, whether it's worth it even to pray or whether you believe that everything you ask will be done for you how, how, and, and that if it's not, God's not real. There's probably so many different opinions of prayer, but there really is only one teaching on prayer and you don't need to get it from the Bible bookstore. You get it from Matthew chapter 5. You get it where Jesus says, when you pray, pray. And then you make that the anthem, the way of life. It isn't just words you say every day. Things like this, like he says, our Father. When you pray, pray to our Father. Now all the verses around this, before and after, are about making God your Father. I studied Andrew Murray for a considerable time in my young youth pastor life where he really spelled out Jesus teaching what prayer is. And it was all about a son to a father. If your prayer is a son to a father, if I said to my dad, Dad, I'm, I've, I'm turning 10 today. I'm no longer at single digit age. I think I should be allowed to drive the car. I should have, you should make keys for me and I should have freedom to drive my car your car, wherever I want to go. My father would not have given me the car or the keys or anything. He would have done what he knows is best for me. And my prayer life would have been that I trust my father. And if I did trust my father, I'd know he's making the right choice not to give me keys or let me have the car whenever I want to drive out on American highways and endanger everyone else's lives. <clears throat> right? I would trust my father. I would ask him because that's what a nine-year-old wants, turning 10. I want to grow up. I'm growing up, Dad. Would you buy me a pistol? <laughs> well, of course not. You following me? And Jesus says, the, when you pray, pray from the point of him being your father. Now, what is that? My father, by the time he died, was holding my arm. I was walking him to his chair. He was trusting me with his wife. He said the night he died, you have her, don't you? I said, I got her, Dad. Wasn't the same relationship anymore. And he passed, and I had her until she passed. When I sing, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. I am supposed to be living a relationship with God as a toddler lives with his father. Now, my toddlers, I remember when Nicole was jumping off an ottoman, jumping and flying. She was flying like Superman, and I would catch her, and she'd giggle and run back, climb up, and dive again. And I remember it might have been Vicky or my dad or somebody called my name, and I went, yeah? <laughs> right? Some days, I'm not as good as God. <laughs> He's never distracted from me flying by. He always catches, right? You can trust your father God as a toddler trusts their parent. The main part of my story, Nicole trusted I would catch her. And I talked her into my apology, so she trusted me again and dove some more. But it's, if you follow what I'm saying, this trust you. Never once did any one of my kids say, are we even going to get to eat today? No, they just knew we're going to get to eat today. They trusted their parents. And this is the point of view of prayer. And he's saying you should do it all the time, constantly, with no breaks. They're really, this is really saying there should be no breaks in your trust of God as your father. Wouldn't he do more than an unrighteous judge and a widow seeking justice wouldn't he do better than that wouldn't it be better instead of going to the courts going to the government trusting in somebody else 
trusting in mammon, money, possession, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't you have a better outcome if you trusted in him? That's what it's saying. And, and Jesus taught in Matthew 5 that you say, our father in heaven. My, the fa- my, my, my incredibly big knows-it-all father, can my daddy can beat up your daddy kind of father, of me a toddler in the faith. I am less than a toddler. I'm less than a newborn in my understanding compared to him. And that's what it means. And I hallow your name. It means I honor and reveal your name. And what's his name? His name is the one who is with you. Moses drove him crazy to get a name. The Jews made up names all through time. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, all these Rapha and Sitkanu and all these things they called him. But he only gave one name. He said he is the I am, the one who is always with you. And so when I pray and when you pray, who are you praying to? Are you praying continually and always and and every day of your life continually? Are you, and what is praying? Or is it really the model we've made of the hands together and the bowed head? Is that really what praying he's talking about? Or is it the lifestyle that he continually says, the effective and the effectual prayer of a righteous man? Wow. It's effectual because you're righteous. And so is your prayer every day, all the time, no matter what faces you? Are you doing the next right thing? Intent on never sinning. Intent on never falling. Intent on never backing up. Never surrender. Never surrender. Is that the prayer you're bringing forward? I will trust you every day of my life with all that I have and all that I am. And whatever comes what may, hell or high water, fire or no fire, life or death, the phone call comes, the horror of it, I will still love you all the days of my life. Is that the foundation of your prayer? I trust in you, Lord. I have had, Paul says, I've had a lot and I've had nothing. And I have to tell you that none of it matters. The only thing that matters is that incredible greatness of knowing him. (laughs) My prayer for you, he said, is that you would have a download of wisdom and revelation. That you would have the eyes of your heart open so that you'd know him better. This is what the continual prayer to a heaven, our heavenly Father, whose name, we, whose name we would never dishonor, and again, his name is presence with you. His presence with you is his name because it's his faithfulness. It's his promise. It's his every day. I am with you. That's his name. And what is my prayer? It's my actions. It's my decisions. Yes, it's my words. Yes, it's my requests, but it's not limited to any of those things. It's all of it. Do I wake up in the morning ready to be his? Do I wake up in the morning, this day belongs to him. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the continual and effectual prayer of a righteous man. That's what this is. He says, wouldn't your answer come and your justice come faster if you prayed to your father instead of the unrighteous judge, counting on the government to take care of you? The more you let the government take care of you, the less you let God take care of you. It really is the truth. You can let him take care of you, but but to count on it that I'm scared to death if the government doesn't come through is the exact opposite. That's the trusting in the unrighteous judge. And if you beat on their door enough, they will... They'll give you some kind of justice. Are you following me? How about, how about what he taught about, let your kingdom come, your will be done. When you pray to your father in heaven, is that what you're praying? Let your kingdom, let your kingdom. I'm, I, I'm, I'm believing in the cross so that one day I might be able to be in heaven for eternity and live with you. That is not what he's here for. That's not what the cross was for. The cross was to bring the kingdom of heaven out from behind a veil, out from behind a curtain, and come out to you to make his home in you. Don't you know you're the temple of the living God? To be in you, through you, with you, continually, repetitive, 
Repeat, rinse, and repeat again. Just all day long, the same thing, over and over and over. You are with me, and we are here to honor you. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Do you trust him for your daily bread or do you trust you for your daily bread? Whenever you trust you for your daily bread, your your prayers are going really quiet. And when you trust him for your daily bread, your prayers are loud and clear. I trust in you. I give all that I have so that I'm in a position. Every year, every week we take an offering. Every week we want to encourage you to give more than you can afford. So that you put yourself in a position of trusting him for your daily bread. I cannot make it without you. Has to be. If you want to be the person that goes and prays before their heavenly father and walks every day in the presence of the Lord, you have to be a person that has to trust in him and trust in him for your daily bread. How about forgive us this day our, our, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sinned against us. Is that part of your prayer? That every day make sure I have forgiven so that my prayer is powerful in heaven. So that my forgiveness is a sure thing. For Jesus said, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. If you forgive, you'll be forgiven. Is this, and, then, and then when he said, when you pray, pray this. And make sure this is your every day, your attitude. It's not, a, it's not something you kneel down and say. When I was a kid and had to get penance for my sins, I would, first I would make up sins, and then he would tell me a list of penance, and then I'd go say it as fast as I could and go, Oop, done deal, I'm clean, knock it off, I'm good. Then I'd make up more sins the next time. Or I'd even go out and purposely sin just so I'd have something to tell him because I couldn't, his leg was, it was embarrassing. What do you think you're good? So good you have no sins? No, I just make them up. Well, those prayers aren't those prayers aren't going to do any good. Did I forgive so that I could be forgiven and trust him for my daily bread and know him as my heavenly father and live in his kingdom that's here that the cross came to give me that that the holiness of God would live in me the righteousness of him, Jesus would be my breastplate the salvation would be my helmet the the faith in him would be my shield and his word would be my sword and you follow what i'm saying that this would be my daily life my every day my all day and event and And how much more would the Heavenly Father give justice readily and speedily to those who live like that? That's what this is talking about. And yet I think it's people getting permission to do their prayer model. And I don't know that a prayer model as I've heard are exactly what match what Jesus' prayer model is, which is forgive as you've been forgiven and forgive so that you can continue to be forgiven. How about that? How about... I have to say it in my head to remember the next line. Deliver us from temptation and deliver us from the evil one. Is your prayer part of it? Keep me from evil. Turn off the bad stuff. You've got an off button. Turn it off. Turn off the thoughts that are evil and pray for protection from the evil one. He roars around like a lion. He walks around like a lion seeking someone to devour. I don't know how that goes. A roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Pray for protection from the roaring lion. Comes as angels of darkness come masquerading as angels of light. Wolves come masquerading as sheep. I mean, that's scary stuff, man. That's like, who am I to think I'm going to recognize every sheep and every angel masquerading they're better than this than i am they are they're invisible how how am i going to protect myself from them well if i believe that my father which i did as a little child anything happened i got behind my dad he's a wire wiry guy but he was fat he was flashy he would flash and i was safe man my dad would protect me like a toddler trust his father Protect me from the evil one. They're invisible. Get behind my dad. If I believe he's my dad, if I believe I'm his child. This is the, this is, Andrew Murray taught me these things a hundred years ago. And I don't exaggerate. Sort of. 
It's as a father. When did you get up here? <laughs> I'm not done. All right. How about this one? Is his kingdom and his power and his glory, is that the subject of your prayers? For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Is that the effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man? Let me live that your kingdom, your power, and your glory would be seen by all men. And that I not be someone who clouds that vision. That I would not be someone who takes people away from that vision. There is only one description for a person wanting to pray to a father and have justice readily come. And it's the word Christian. There really is. The definition of Christian biblically is a child of God. Someone who sees God as their father from the eyes of a toddler. That is the only goal of every person seeking to walk with God. And there is no way to that father relationship lest you come through Jesus Christ. There is no other name on earth or under heaven by which men can be saved but the name of Jesus. And people will come and tell you that Jesus is not important and I'm telling you Jesus says Jesus is important he said there is no way to the father if you've seen me you've seen the father I only do what I see the father do and I only say what I hear the father say and there is no other name under heaven or on earth by which men can be saved and there is no other name by which a man can pray to a father in heaven as a toddler as an, with any kind of innocence. If you're not praying as a toddler, you have no innocence. If you don't let him cause you to be born again, made brand new, you have no innocence to speak to this holy God and come to him as a toddler to a father. And if you do, and you do continually, and you do every day without ceasing, and you continue to do this, now if you sin, if you trip up, He is faithful and just to forgive us. And if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from every unrighteousness. But there's only one way to have a relationship with God as a toddler to a father and pray like a child asks his father and to trust that the answers are what you need and he knows what you need before you ask him. Any of these scriptures ring a bell to you? Have you read them before? There's only one way, and that is through the being born again of the Spirit in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you that if you have walked away from him, if you have just lessened your opinion of Jesus, I just want to invite you to give your life to Jesus today. Join his body. Be connected to his body. You cannot, the eye cannot say to the ear, I have no need of you. You cannot say, I don't need the body of Christ. You need the body of Christ. And you cannot have this effectual, fervent prayer that justice comes speedily without every day, day in, day out, line upon line, precept upon precept, continually making your request to God through the righteousness of your life, through your belief in him, your faith in him, your trusting for your bread, your resisting the evil one. All of those things are part of prayer that is continual prayer. That is 24-7, 365, all the days of your life prayer is you living as a toddler with a father in heaven that you trust, that you follow, that you obey. Toddlers, toddlers with good relations with their fathers, they obey. That you serve. Are you hearing me? And I'm telling you that this could be your day to develop a relationship, a greater level of his anointing. You can have a great revelation of his love for you today. Is that something you want today? Is that something you would cry out for and come and seek him and find him? Is that something you want? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Holy Spirit, just as you did for me when I was a child, 
I pray that you'd speak to us in your spirit. That you would call your sons home. Call your daughters home. Home to relationship with their father who art in heaven. Whose name we revere and hallow. Oh, Lord. Whose kingdom we want to come and be in us and through us and with us every day of our lives. Whose will is all we want right here in our life. Father, we become people who trust in you for our daily bread. That we become children, Lord, who resist the evil one and cry out to you and know that you are the protection from the evil one. Hallelujah. Father, you are the kingdom and the power and the glory. You're the king of heaven and Lord over all the earth. And we love you. Would you just let the Holy Spirit touch you, give him permission, right? Just t- tell me the truth, Lord. Convict me if I need conviction. Encourage me if I need encouragement. We seek justice today heavenly kingdom justice. And we call out to the judge, our heavenly father. Show us the way. Show us the way to get back home. To get back to our father's table. To our father's house. Show us the way, Lord. Heavenly Father, show us the way to get back home. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. If you want to give your life to Jesus today, we have so many pastors here that want to pray with you. And if our if our pastors would just come up here. asking all of you to come up here. We're going to do what we used to do. And if you want to give your life to Jesus, if you're a woman, would you come to one of these women? And if you're a man, would you come to this man? <laughs> There's more coming. Would you come and give your life to Jesus? Surrender your life to your Father in heaven. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.